Have you thought about using Figma, but you're not sure what exactly it is, how you'll use it, or whether it's free or not? Good news is you can use it for free, and I'm going to show you how to do that so you can get started in it and find out if it works for you. The even better news is I think it's the best tool since any of the Adobe products, and I'm going to show you exactly why. First off, Figma, it's a design tool and a prototyping tool. Prototyping basically means you can show motion in your designs. You can show a prototype of, let's say, an app or movement or some kind of interaction, which is really awesome and one of my favorite things about Figma. One of my other favorite things, you can build out style libraries and component libraries and basically have reusable elements in your design. This actually allows you to save a ton of time when you're doing designs. I'll show you exactly how I've implemented this at Pacers Gaming for some of my social media graphics. So it's not all about building app designs. You can actually use this as a design tool in many different ways. Now first off, is it free? I'll put a link down below that you can click to sign up. Yes, you can start for free. In fact, you can use Figma Unlimited for free. It just works in a little bit different way, and I'll show you kind of how that's positioned here in a second. But you get three Figma files or FigJam files as well, which is like a collaboration tool. But you also get unlimited personal files. So if you're building out a team in Figma, you get three files with like three pages per file. But the personal side, you can actually get unlimited and we'll show you what that is. And then once you want to upgrade, it's $12 per month to upgrade, which is not a bad price for how powerful this tool is. Now you can start online. There's a browser version, but you can also download the desktop app, which I would recommend. And we're going to hop over into that right now. So I've got it down here and this is the first dashboard you see, which is just my drafts, or you might even see recents, which would be recent files. Now inside of my drafts, I can actually add a new design file and basically have all these little saved files. If it's overwhelming to see the thumbnails, you can just switch it to the list view. So all of my files in, are in here. I can add a new design file. In fact, I'll click that button right now. You'll notice it open up a new tab. This new tab is untitled because I haven't named my design file. By the way, Figma auto saves everything, which is great. Now inside of here, you can have pages in your design file. So I can have kind of like multiple files housed within the same project. And that's kind of what it is. So I've got pages here. I can add as many pages as I want, as long as I'm saving this into my drafts, where you can work on your own personal projects. But if you wanted to create a team, that's where the paid version comes in. And the team allows you to house your projects under certain categories or certain teams. You can split those out however you want. If you actually want to have a working team, like you're working with multiple creatives, you can do that. Or if you're having multiple clients, you can basically separate them out like that too. So I have a pixel and bracket team in which I have a project in here. If I go inside of this project, you can see that I have multiple pages right here, but I can only use up to three. And so I've used all three of my pages here. So to get unlimited, I'd have to go sign up for the pro plan. So back to the basics. Why use Figma? What is this tool? First off, on the left-hand side, you might have noticed I've got layers, I've got assets, I've got my pages. Layers is pretty similar to what you might understand from Photoshop or Illustrator. Assets is where you have your components and your library of items. So like if you use icons over and over, you can pull them out and reuse them. And it's kind of like if you're familiar with smart objects or even symbols in Illustrator, smart objects in Photoshop, it's similar. These assets live somewhere else where they're, they've been designed and then you can bring them into your document, but you can go back to that original file, make edits, and it changes them everywhere in your document, which is really awesome. You can also get in a little deeper with things called variants. So like in this case, I want to switch the element to something else. I'll show you how I did that, for instance, in the Pacers game and social graphics to load in all of the teams in the league 
and have a drop down menu where when I have that asset or that logo selected, let's say on a scorecard graphic, I can simply just switch out the logo with a little drop down menu with whatever team I've loaded in. It's pretty awesome. So learning the basics, basically you have frames and let's zoom out a little bit here. There we go. You've got frames, so you can create frames that have backgrounds. It's a little different than rectangles. Frames have some power to them, like you can do auto layout things inside of your frames. You can do a lot of padding and spacing between elements, which is really awesome. There are preset sizes to frames to help you if you're building out like on an iPhone, if you're building out a website on a desktop. And you also can look at some of the existing elements on the canvas and create frames from those selections as well. Now frames are pretty simple, but then you also have constraints. So the really cool thing about constraints, you might notice if you have worked in Illustrator before, you basically put things on your page and they stay where they're at. They don't move around based on resizing of something. But in this case, if you add constraints to some of your elements, like keeping it locked to a corner or the center of the object, you can actually constrain those objects to those spots, like pin them to the upper right corner. So when you resize your rectangles or your frames in this case, they stay with them. They stay together, which is really awesome. So if I resize this frame, for instance, you can see how the button elements, as I zoom in here, the button elements all stay together. The buttons actually expand. So that's another part of constraints is actually keeping that as expanding and scaling. So these elements scale with the design. You might think that that's really awesome for responsive design, and it is. Next up, you have components, like we talked about before. Components are these reusable parts of your design, which save you time when you have something that's very repetitive. So for instance, you could create a card here that's a component and then reuse that in each of these spots and then edit what the information says on that card for each of the spot. And then if I wanted to go back and say, change this to yellow, it would change every instance of that in your design. Very, very powerful. I'll show you how I utilize that with the logo situation uh, for Pacers Gaming. Styles, you might be familiar with libraries from the Adobe Suite. Styles is kind of like libraries, except even better. So styles, you can create all these different styles with your text and, and anything really you want, whether it's like color styles, gradient styles, text styles, you save them in and you can have header styles. You can have color styles that you can apply to frames or other elements in your design. And these things hang out on the right hand side over here. So anytime you have something selected, kind of like the properties panel or the design panel here on the right side, you can actually apply those styles. Smart selection is, is pretty cool. You can adjust spacing and adjust positioning. So for instance, in this design down here, if I have multiple things selected, you start to notice these little pink lines in between elements, allowing me to just quickly change the padding, change the little spacing inside of here. And so that's some really awesome handy little tools when you have multiple objects selected that I wish was in Illustrator. It's not, and it's actually, it's really nice to keep things lined up here in Figma. Now exporting, basically you have frames, you can export frames however you want. Uh, as long as you set up your different export settings, you can see I have an export button over here. Once I have a frame selected, I can just set up an export setting for it and export it in many different ways. That's very, very simple stuff for like exporting social media graphics. There's a lot of collaboration in Figma. Figma allows you to have other people collaborate, come in, add comments. You can, sh you can actually design together at the exact same time, which is super powerful. And you can also share elements. So like for people that don't have the program, you can share something with them so that other people, whether it's clients or stakeholders, can take a look at what you've created. Now, all of that has just been the design side. We haven't even talked about the prototyping side. So let's go back to this little, little app element over here. And I'm gonna switch from design in my right uh, sidebar 
to prototype. Now prototype allows you, like I said before, to create animation and interaction with your design. You see these little blue arrows? You notice this blue arrow goes from, or this line goes from this little search icon to this frame over here. And then the home button goes back to this guy. If I click on one of these that have been set up, essentially hovering over one of the elements and you click and drag to take that element to another, I basically created a button out of this search icon. And then in my interaction details, I can say, well, when you click that, navigate to this frame, search frame, how do you do that? Well, uh, the animation I want is a push animation, uh, push to the left, essentially. And so it gives you a little preview of what that looks like up here. You can do some easing in and out. So you can make these animations really fluid, really nice looking. And then if I click on this discover frame and I click the play button, I'm going to be able to see my prototype. So I've got this prototype out here. I actually even selected an iPhone uh, overlay on top of that prototype. You've got this little touch cursor and I can see, oh, okay, well, what if I click on search here, what happens? It slides and if I click on home, it goes back. And you can set up so many different interactions with frames and elements and scrolling and so many different things here in Figma to prototype this out and build out any sort of experience that you want, which is one of the things that is super awesome to me. Okay, so now I'm going to show you, I've logged into the Pacers gaming account. I'm going to hop into these game day posts. This is kind of messy, but I want to show you the power of components and show you how you can create different designs. Like you can do social media graphics in here. It's not about all about app designs and stuff. So you can actually bring in pictures. You can do a layout here. If I look at this game day frame, I've got this frame over here. It's in my layers panel. I can drop this down. I can see all the different elements that I have in this group. This frame is essentially a group of all of these elements here in my layers. And I've got all these elements here and I've actually set this up with a component. If you see up here, just outside of you know this guy down here, I have this component set up. This component includes all the logos, almost all of them. I haven't filled them all in yet because we haven't played every team yet, but all of these are variations of this component. So this component looks like this and I can switch the logo out for whoever we're playing. So for instance, if we're not playing the Mavs, I can actually click on this piece, which is a component in the right hand side. That component is called logo box. I can swap the instance of the component or swap it to a different component, but I can also go down to team where I've set up this variant or kind of like a variable of the component and I can select any team I want. So if we're playing Blazer 5, I can select Blazer 5 and it puts in that logo down there. So this is, I mean, this is, this is what sold me on trying to use Figma for um, what I'm doing. So we're in the middle of our season and I just recreated elements I had already made before and then started to build them out here in Figma and create these components to make it really easy for me to swap these out. I'm not even using the full power of it. You should be able to swap out entire, like I should be able to not have to even change or edit this. I don't have the font, so I can't edit it. But you know, if I double click on this, I could edit that text for whomever we're playing. Don't even have to do that. You can create components or componentize your designs so much here in Figma. And you can see here, it's not like, I have a pretty grungy sort of like, um, you know, this is something you might create in Photoshop, which I had before, but you can add all sorts of gradients to your text. I even have some texture here uh, from some background elements I've brought in. There are different plugins that you can use in Figma. So if you wanted to add things like grain to your design, you can actually utilize plugins to do that. And if I right click, you can actually see down here, plugins and development. We have, uh, we can look for different plugins here, import plugins, etc. There's also widgets here in Figma. So there's a lot of different powerful things. You can bring in AI plugins as well. So if you had a list of people and their, you know, mock-up information, 
not the real information, but mock-up information. There's like AI plugins that'll help you fill in that information in one click without even having to uh, go through and actually, you know, create an Excel spreadsheet and import that or have a bunch of names that you're just trying to type out over and over again and change the information. So this is some pretty cool stuff and this is all available for free. You know, if you guys want to sign up and try Figma and test it out, just click on the link down in the description below. I highly, highly recommend it. I think you're going to improve as a designer just by using Figma and trying to force yourself to kind of learn it like I am right now. And so you'll see some tutorials on this channel about Figma. As I learn things, I'm going to help you learn things. And we barely touched the surface of what this program is. This wasn't a, oh, here's how to use Figma. This was just letting you know, this is free. Go use it. Go use it right now. Improve yourself as a designer. And anything you can do to improve your skill set is going to help you grow and move forward. If you're really serious about graphic design or maybe even UI, UX design, that's the direction I want to head in. That's why I'm trying to learn this. And I do see some better features here than you know some features that are in Illustrator. Like this Figma is built out. There's a reason that Adobe bought Figma. And right now it kind of operates separately, but there's some real power here and I highly recommend you learn it. I'll see you guys in the next one.